Hello, everyone. Today I'm here with Vienna Pau. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and what organization you represent? Yeah. Uh, my name is Vina Bell, as she mentioned, uh, pronouns are she, her. Um, I work with the YWCA Utah. I'm the Assistant Director of Clinical Services here. What is the purpose of YWCA and what are its objectives? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our mission at the YWCA Utah is to eliminate racism and empower women and also to promote peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. Um, our vision, you know, essentially is um, Utah women thriving and leading the lives that they choose. Um, and then benefiting um, their families and communities. And usually how we do that is through our services, our direct services. Um, we provide uh, family victim services to folks who are experiencing violence or domestic violence. Um, we have a variety of different services for folks like, in different uh, aspects of, of their journey um, as survivors. Um, yeah, we just have comprehensive services that support victims of domestic violence. What are those services and resources that are available to the community? Yeah, um, so the Family Justice Center um, is one of our programs here uh, where we uh, basically it's like a nonstop, like a one stop shop for folks um, who are experiencing domestic violence or interpersonal violence um, and are in need of support. Um, they can reach out to the Family Justice Center and get connected to a guide who will basically support them um, with identifying what some of their needs are, um, with some safety planning, and then connecting them to the resources, which could look like financial support, housing, um, therapy, or even getting to connected to DWS or Department of Workforce Services. And um, so that's one program that we have. We also have a domestic violence shelter, which is our Women in Jeopardy program. Um, if there are folks who are experiencing domestic violence and are needing shelter, um, or they're displaced due to the violence, they can call the crisis line and get assessed to come into the shelter. Um, the shelter, it's temporary uh, support where we provide case management. Um, we support them with all their basic needs like you know food, shelter, clothing, things like that. Um, and then support them on their goals towards stability. Um, we offer those services to um, anybody who's experiencing domestic violence. So women, um, men, and you know people who um, are non-binary. Uh, so we just have comprehensive services that support everybody. And the Women in Jeopardy program specifically um, is the shelter where we do that. Uh, we also have transitional housing um, for folks who, as they've moved on from the shelter, and we do have the transitional housing, which folks can come and live there. Obviously, like they have to apply um, for that program, um, but they can stay there for uh, up to six months to a year, um, also receive case management and continue to receive like support and services that help them, you know, as they are healing from um, the domestic violence that they experienced. Uh, the last program I'll talk about is our children's program, which is Lowly Eccles, our daycare. This is community facing. Folks in the community are able to um, use the daycare if they would like. Um, and then actually one another one that I'll mention is also our public policy arm. Um, we have a public policy program where we have um, the director of that program um, works throughout the year uh, to advocate for some of the policies that most directly benefit survivors of domestic violence and then also the work that we do here. That's a lot of things you guys are all doing at the same time. Yeah, is there like... Is. A lot of people who apply for the shelter and the halfway homes that aren't able to get in them, do you have somewhere else that you recommend them to go in case there isn't enough room for them? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. The, there is a high amount of callers. Um, and the YWC is not the only domestic violence shelter. There are others in Salt Lake County and then also in other counties here in Utah. Um, if we are not able to house uh, someone who's calling and needing shelter, we'll usually refer them to um, other shelters that might have space. Um, we will also safety plan with them um, so that they are at least safe in that moment and, you know, have a plan for what to do to keep themselves safe as they are, you know, looking for a shelter and seeking shelter. But we'll also encourage them to call back um, if they're still in need of shelter and we don't have space that day. Um, they can call another day because, you know, the because space here in shelter, it's it's constantly uh, fluctuating. Really cool that you still give them some type of tools when they call, even if there's not room for them in the shelter, that they're they're leaving not with just a no, but here's a plan of what you should do. So that's 
it's cool that you guys do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are, I noticed on your website, you had different tabs of all the different things you just mentioned about what you do. One of them was about abusive relationships. And you had listed a long list of like, here are some red flags of an abusive relationship. Um, so, but what are those red flags and warning signs of an abusive partner? Yeah, I think first and for, foremost is just recognizing and controlling behavior. Um, if, if you're in a relationship and it's like any dynamic, whether that be, your intimate partner, or, or even, you know, another family member. Um, but if you recognize and you can feel like controlling behavior, um, also signs of like blaming others, not taking on any responsibility for their own feelings or what's happening in their life. Sometimes that, those are definitely red flags that there's something going on internally with that person. Um, hypersensitivity uh, to just things that you might say to that person, um, or even like if that person feels der- uh, rejected, um, and then their like reaction to it. Sometimes that can also be <clears throat> a sign uh, that that person might be, you know, um, struggling and might take out their feelings on their partner or on someone else. Um, and then I think when um, when things start to escalate um, and there's concerns for your safety, like sometimes it'll start with verbal abuse um, and then can continue from there. Uh, but when there's like, emer- uh, em- sorry, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, when your partner starts to isolate you from your friends, your family, um, and then the abuse starts to escalate, those are definitely signs that um, you should probably get some help or that person definitely needs some support. What should people do if they realize they are in an abusive relationship? Where should they turn? What information should they read? What should they do? Uh, I definitely should start talking to somebody Um, and that could be your direct support system first um, before you start talking to like a therapist or, you know, um, a provider or or anybody like that. Sometimes it helps for you to talk to somebody that you're most comfortable with so that you can feel grounded in how you're feeling um, and for someone to kind of validate like what you're experiencing, what you're going through, somebody who actually knows you. And then from there, like seek some actual support around what you're experiencing. If it's if it's emotional, verbal abuse, talk to a therapist about ways that um, you can communicate with your partner to let them know that what they're uh, projecting onto you is unsafe and that there are things that like communication styles that could be improved. Um, I think if it's past that, um, to start creating a safety plan. Um, you can call the Family Justice Center and talk with a guide who will support you with creating a safety plan, which will help you um, be able to get to a safe place either with your partner or maybe even like away from your partner, whether it has to be that you stay with a family member for a time or if you don't have any family members or friends that you can stay with, um, then working with a guide at the Family Justice Center can help you create a plan towards um, sustainable housing for yourself. Um, but I think those would be the top two things is to just talk to somebody um, and then start creating a safety plan and seeking support outside of just your um, direct social support system. You kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier that abusive relationships can take place in intimate relationships and with family members. And I think um, something a lot of people have a hard time with is realizing that it's okay to distance yourself from someone if they're abusing you, even if they're family. So a lot of people are like, well, that's your uncle, that's your brother, that's your mom. Like you have to have a relationship and that's not necessarily true. If there is an abusive relationship and you can't, you know, you can't change their behavior. You can set guidelines and boundaries. And if they keep breaking them, then sometimes you have to break off that relationship to protect yourself from someone else. So something I thought about as you're talking about, it can be someone from your family as well as an intimate uh, partner. And then you keep mentioning a safety plan. What is included in a safety plan? Yeah, a safety plan um, basically is sometimes when things are happening, uh, we don't often think on like what we should do. Um, What should I do in case things with my partner starts to escalate? What should I do in case, you know, just certain situations and thinking ahead and creating a plan of what you should do if things get to that point? essentially is what a safety plan is. Um, Sometimes with your partner, whether it's your intimate partner or a family member, you may be dependent on them for certain reasons. So whatever it is you're dependent on that person for, and you may need to separate yourself from them, that's going to be the basis of your safety plan. If you live with that person um, and you need a new place to stay, 
um, that would be included in your safety bond, uh, safety plan. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, like ways to have a conversation with somebody with an abuse, abusive partner um, that isn't going to trigger abuse um, and that will keep you safe. Sometimes a conversation and coaching on conversations um, will be included in the safety plan. Um, if somebody is fleeing domestic violence, also what we include in the safety plan is the timing, the plan on when a person should leave, understand when the, the abusive partner is going to be um, away from the home or the safest time for a person to be able to leave. Um, we include that in the safety plan as well. And then um, also people that you can talk to, like your immediate support system that you can call and reach out to that can support you while you are transitioning out of like an abusive relationship and trying to find stability for yourself. Uh, YWCA resources do you wish more people were made use of or aware of? The Family Justice Center, for sure. I think as you can tell, I, I talk about it pretty often, uh, especially because this is the resource that is open to the community and anybody at all um, in Utah that, that is experiencing interpersonal violence. Um, I think they're just an incredibly comprehensive service. Um, and I think anybody who, even if you... Um, are listening to this and it might be triggering something in you that like you're curious like am I experiencing um, domestic violence am I in an abusive relationship calling the family justice center and talking through some of the things you may be experiencing um, that would be a good first step for anybody to you know really engage like what's going on and also why I feel like the family justice center is a great resource I'll also say I haven't talked very much about um, our equity work but that's another resource that I think is important for people to know. Um, as I mentioned in our mission, um, it's to eliminate racism and empower women. Uh, in the month of June, we have a 21 day challenge, which essentially is um, like a learning tool for folks to use um, to learn about systemic racism and ways that you can change that. Um, it's, if you go to our website, um, I'll share a link where you can sign up for the 21 day challenge. It will start next week on June 20th um, after Juneteenth. Um, and then each day it will share different aspects of racism and ways that we can eliminate racism. And it'll give different offerings that could be appropriate for you. Like we have like a five minute one. I think there's a 10 minute one and then one that's a little bit longer depending on how much time you have to engage with it daily. Um, but I think that's another resource I feel like is underutilized that I think people should make more use of. Um, for the Family Justice Center, is it a center that you can walk into during business hours or is it somewhere you should call ahead before you walk in and make an appointment? If someone needs to go there, what should they, how should they approach that? Yeah, uh, definitely call in first so you can schedule a time to meet with a guide. Um, we used to have some walk-in services. I think that's changed like with the pandemic and then also wanting to be more intentional about responding to folks um, and their needs and giving them the amount of time that they need. Um, so I would say to call in and uh, get scheduled to meet with the guide. I can provide a link for the 21-day the challenge in the description below for anyone who wants to sign up. And then another tab I saw on the website is like opportunity. So what are some of the opportunities at YWCA? Um, I think, as I mentioned, the 21 day challenge is one of the most like broader opportunities that anyone can really engage with. Um, if folks are interested in volunteering at the YWCA, um, there's opportunities for that as well. I mean, there's, we could always use the support in different areas. Um, so calling into the YWCA, the main line, um, and, you know, letting them know that you would like to volunteer, depending on like your availability. I think that's another great opportunity both to support the mission and the work that we do, but also to understand a little bit more about um, domestic violence and some of the work that we do around that. Something mentioned about like a team group or team leadership group. A team a group? Um, yes, we do have a teen program here. That one is specifically available to um, the kids that come into shelter, um, which honestly is one of my favorite programs here at the YWCA. Um, usually when we have people who come and stay in the shelter, the services that are available to them here are only available during the time that they're staying with us. 
And then we'll, you know, connect them, warm hand off with other resources to continue on the work that they're doing. Um, the teen program is the only one that we allow teens to continue to return to the program um, so that they continue to have a social support system that they are familiar with um, and they can continue to return to that program up until they're 18. Um, so even if we have somebody who started the teen program when they're 12, if they leave, um, they're welcome to return to that program, you know, throughout their whole time as a teen. Um, as far as other youth services, um, we don't have anything specifically for youth outside of those who come through the program, um, but I do think that would be a great idea. And then what are the YWCA Utah 2023 policy priority areas? Sure, um, our policy priority areas, they align you know, with our mission and they are race and gender equity, affordable housing, domestic violence and uh, sexual violence services, child care and early childhood education, and then perinatal children's mental health. Do you have anything else you want to add about the YWCA or the youth, oh, sorry, the Justice Center? Anything that you think might be beneficial for people to know about? Uh, no, I feel like I captured most of the things that I feel like people should know about. Um, yeah, I just love the work that we do here um, and also just enjoy working with people through their journeys um, as they are healing from domestic violence and then also finding um, empowerment and safety for themselves. And if someone wants to get in contact with YWCA, what would be a good phone number or website to reach out to? Uh, our website would be the best place to go to to get in contact with our organization. It's basically ywcautah.org. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome.